species colonized terrestrial habitats as early as 500 million years ago. Terrestrial arthropods appear in the fossil record 440 million years ago. Plants and terrestrial arthropods existed and evolved together, and it wasn't long before all of the major insect orders that feed on plants, the insect herbivores, evolved. Herbivores are animals that feed on plant products, and entomologists use the term phytophagy to describe plant feeding behaviors in insects. Many researchers believe that the evolution of phytophagy has contributed to the massive diversity of insect species we see today. In fact, plant feeding insect species make up almost a quarter of the known animal diversity on Earth. Such high species diversity has created a lot of variety in the diet and feeding behavior among different groups of herbivorous insects. Whereas some species will feed on a wide range of plants, others are restricted to only a single plant species. Similarly, some insects are restricted to feeding on particular plant parts or tissues, while others are not. Over the next few lessons, we will discuss the diverse breadth of diet types and feeding strategies of herbivorous insects. In this lesson, however, we will first introduce the concepts of coevolution and ecological fitting, two processes that shaped the evolution of herbivorous insects. When two species interact over a period of time, they can exert selective pressures on each other. The evolution of traits in response to these selective pressures is called coevolution. Coevolution can be specific or diffuse. Specific coevolution involves only two closely interacting species and often results in an evolutionary arms race or tight mutualism. In this case, both species continuously evolve specific reciprocal adaptations in response to the other's traits. Take a look at this picture of a moth and the flower that it pollinates. What are the features in the plant and insect that you think may have co-evolved? And why might this have happened? This orchid has an exceptionally long nectar spur, the tubular extension where nectar is stored. An adult Darwin's hawk moth is a specialized pollinator that feeds primarily on the nectar of this particular orchid species. The length of the nectar spur makes it difficult for other pollinators to reach the nectar, and so the long proboscis of this moth gives it exclusive access to the resource. In fact, the average proboscis length of this species is over 20 centimeters long, which lets it feed from the base of the spur. As the moth feeds, it brushes against the flower and picks up pollen. The diet specialization and exceptional mouth parts of this moth ensure that the next flower it visits and pollinates is likely to be the same species of orchid. This reduces the probability that the pollen will be delivered to the wrong plant species. In this complex co-evolutionary relationship, the moth is guaranteed access to an exclusive food source, while the orchid minimizes pollen waste to generalist pollinators. In contrast to specific co-evolution, reciprocal adaptations can also evolve among multiple interacting species. This is known as diffuse coevolution. These interactions may not be limited to a single lineage of plants, but can involve multiple interacting groups of plants and insects. In addition to coevolution between plants and phytophagous insects, new plant insect interactions can evolve because the insects are pre adapted to exploit a new resource a process known as ecological fitting. This occurs when an organism that forms an interaction with a novel species or uses a novel habitat appears to have traits co-evolved for that interaction that are actually the result of adaptations the organism has to its previous environment. 
Ecological fitting often occurs in phytophagous insects, either when an herbivorous insect is introduced to an area with novel hosts, or when a new plant is introduced, which is used by herbivorous insects in the plant's new range. Ecological fitting can also occur with other organisms, such as host switching of parasitoid wasps. For instance, a population of herbivorous insects that specializes on one plant may be able to shift to another host species if it is already able to degrade the toxins produced by the other plant species. Furthermore, if this population of herbivores evolves additional adaptations in response to the new host plant, they may become partially reproductively isolated from other populations of the same insect species. This is known as host race formation and can be considered as a precursor to speciation, the mechanism of species creation. Although ecological fitting and host race formation are separate processes which do not have to co-occur, a good example of both ecological fitting and host race formation can be observed in the apple maggot fly, Regalides pominella. When apples were introduced into North America from Europe in the 1800s, certain populations of hawthorn feeding Regalides flies switched from feeding on hawthorn to apple because their adaptations to feed on hawthorn also allowed them to consume apples. This host switch was therefore based on ecological fitting. Mating occurs at the host plant, so the populations of flies with different host preferences have become partially reproductively isolated from each other. This has resulted in the formation of two distinct host races which do not mix in nature, each of which has further evolved specific adaptations for their preferred host plants. Adaptive traits that have evolved due to coevolution or ecological fitting have resulted in insect herbivores with different diet breadth from specialists to generalists. In the next video, we will explore some clever plant feeding strategies exhibited by insects.